morning, eh? Sure. Just greet somebody around you, high five them, welcome them. Remember, a stranger is just a friend that you've not yet met. Yeah. For the first time visitors, I'd like to see your hands. Anybody visiting here for the first time? Yes, give them a warm round of applause again. My mind was elsewhere when Dion was doing the announcements. Did they get an opportunity to receive pamphlets the first time? I was okay. I, I knew that. I was just testing you. It's great to have you here this morning. Once again, it's our annual memorial run. Time goes by so quickly. We want to make the time to just give God thanks and praise for the lives of the loved ones that we could share and also just to reflect and to grieve together, to support each other and to be with each other in a time such as this, God has laid on my heart something this morning to share with us specifically on this topic. But before we do, up on the overhead are names that have been given to us of people that have passed on. As you know, it's not only for bikers, anybody and everybody that is dear and near to you that has passed on. You're more than welcome to give their names each year. Just bear with us. We're in the process of deciding whether we're going to put up boards or little plaques or little name tags or whatever. But be that as it may. We're going to honor them as best as we can this morning. So I'd like us to take a, a few moments just to stand and have a few moments of silence while we just honor those folks whose names are on the board, on the screen, as well as those who are not. You know who your loved ones are that have passed on. Let's just take a few moments of silence just to, to honor those loved ones that have passed on. Thank you. You may be seated. And folks, what do you, from one human being to another, what do you say to somebody that has lost a loved one? There's no words that you can share that can really make a difference. So all of us this morning, myself especially, are completely, completely reliant on the person of the Holy Spirit, to bring a message of encouragement and at the very, very least, a glimmer of hope for all of us. And a Christian's worst case scenario is having hope. That's our worst case scenario is having hope. We have so much more than hope to look forward to. And I pray that God, as usual, just moves way beyond the limitations of my speech and speaks to each one of your precious hearts something that you can take home, something that you can be encouraged with at a time like this when you think of your loved ones. You know, some of you, you might have seen and heard of that resurrection bush that occurs in, I think it's indigenous to Namibia, I'm not sure. I think it's indigenous there, but you also get it here where you look at it and it seems it's, it's dead. It's completely lifeless, but it's not. You just give it some time and you give it some water and that thing comes to life again. And that miraculous process God can do in the lives of people. I want to read from Psalm 30 and verse 5. And it says, For his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. I want to thank you, God, that we have your word at our disposal today. I thank you that we're not praying to some idol made by man's hands. We're not praying to a statue. We're not praying to some natural phenomenon out in nature. We're praying to the one who spoke everything into existence by the power of his word. The one that keeps everything going by the power of his word and the fact that you have love for us. The one who sent Jesus to die in our place. Jesus who rose from the dead. And the one who has given us the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to keep us through it all. And I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. The scripture says, weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. One thing that is guaranteed, folks, is that there will be weeping. The when and the how people pass on 
Nobody can comment on that. Nobody can give you answers and reasons. And people, <laughs> they ignorantly say this, the devil takes care of his own. What I want to tell you, you're in a, a place of deception if you think that the devil takes care of anybody. The devil takes care of nobody. He is unable to care. He is unable to nurture. He is unable to bring or create or sustain life. So as to the how and why people die at different ages, babies passing, and uh, tragic accidents happen, folks, I can't for you to answer who come. I can't. Nobody can claim to have the answers for that. It just happens. It says that weeping may last through the night, but when the Bible says but, you know that God is up to something. That's where things change. That's where everything becomes different. But joy comes with the morning. There will be weeping, and it may be long. There will be grief that we struggle to get through. But joy comes in the morning. We'll experience every emotions, all the emotions as Christians and experience God's deliverance through them all. Oftentimes, people have been frowned upon when we cry as Christians, thinking it's unspiritual, or you don't have faith, it's not. I want to encourage you and tell you that it is very real and very part of life. There is a season for grief as well. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that's Priedeka, chapter 3 and verse 4, a time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. And that same book says that everything is beautiful in its time. You say, well, Mozzie, just that mark gladni for my sin. How can grief be beautiful? You know how it can be beautiful? Is where you can experience the deliverance, the peace, and comfort of a living God who's very real. That can somehow in the midst of all bring you peace and comfort. While our hearts are in pieces and while the tears are flowing, this is a God who understands and is not indifferent to our challenges and our difficulties. It's not unspiritual if you cry. You don't lack faith if you cry. Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus. The shortest verse in the Bible, John 11 and verse 35, Jesus Wept. You know, it's amazing if you look at the verses before that. He goes and he teaches. He teaches Mary and Martha and the people there that he's the resurrection and the life. Even though, you, even though you die, you will not die. You'll live forever if you have faith in him and you are in him. He teaches us. He utters these words. And when he speaks about his friend Lazarus and asks about his friend Lazarus, Jesus weeps. I believe for us to see his humanity and also that it's, it's okay to grieve. You know, the, the strange thing is I've, I was a detective years before and I've dealt with death for, for 16 years and have buried strangers, buried friends, loved ones, buried family, and my heart has been cut up and, and experienced grief for all those things. And then my dog died. I had to have my dog put out. My brothers and sisters, I cannot tell you the pain that I felt. I'm like, what is this? What is this? And you, 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 go through, you go through stuff that you just don't understand. You just don't understand. Maybe it's because I don't have biological children. I don't know. But when I had to put my dog down and hold his little face as that drug was taking effect in his body, I can tell you folks, and then having to phone my wife and tell Colette, listen, this is it, and then bury my dog. It's like, really? You know? Um, but that's just how life is. And people are people. And God comforts us through those difficult times. It's not because you're unspiritual, my brother, my sister. It's not because you lack faith. It's because you're a human being that God has created and God has given you emotions. So if you're sitting here this morning and you, you're thinking of that loved one whose name up there or the picture up here or whoever, maybe the name isn't up, and you're thinking, you know, if, that, if I just had a chance to say goodbye, if I could just get one more kiss, one more hug, one more answer, one more briar, one more whatever with that person, and you're grieving. Know that there's the comforter, not some oak with a microphone, some pastor doing his best to give you a message. There's God who wants to speak into your heart, into your life, and comfort you like nobody else can. 
We're not alone in our mourning and our grief. Soos ons gesê het, die Heer is nie onverskillig teen oor ons hartseer en ons pijn en ons leiding. Isaiah 53 and verse 3 speaks of Jesus. It says, He was despised and rejected. By whom? Who rejected Him? The very people He came for. And who else? Oh, thank you. You see, you didn't, you, you didn't come out of your mother's womb a Christian living for Jesus. There was a time when you rejected Jesus. You say, well, I didn't do that. I never blasphemed. I, I always believed there's a God. Well, that's fantastic. The demons also believe that Jesus is real. But there's a time that we didn't live for Jesus. It's, my brother, my sister, it's one thing knowing Jesus and believing Jesus. It's completely something different living for Jesus. So we rejected Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men. This is what the scripture says of him. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, familiar with grief, and a man of sorrows. That's this Jesus. He experienced his sorrows, his fair share of pain and suffering and heartache. Now, think of the person you love the most, more than anybody and more than anything. And then, Multiply that love, like Dion said, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. That's the love that God has for his people. Imagine what it's like, God, looking down upon mankind and seeing the nonsense that ek en jy aanjaag in ons levens. When he sees what we do to each other, how we tear relationships apart, how we kill and murder each other, how we hate each other, have prejudice towards each other, his people. And you know, I've said this before, when we watch a lacquer scop skit movie, ne? a scop skit where the good guy kicks the bad guy's butt, you, you cry lacquer ne? when the enemy is defeated and wiped out. How many of you cry lacquer? Come on, come on. You know, the Bible says that God takes no delight in the death of the wicked. God is not like, yes, you've only heard it, let your hell to gun, baby. God is not like that. God's heart is grieved. God's heart is grieved. There's even a difference in, from Old Testament to New Testament when the Bible describes the anger of God. The anger of God was his pure, pure, holy hatred towards sin in the Old Testament. The anger of God in the New Testament is when he's grieved because he sees our loss of potential when we don't live for him. It's not like, oh man, you've done it again, you muhu. No, his anger is when his heart is grieved because you and I are not living to the potential that God has planned and purposed for us in Christ Jesus. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That's Jesus. What's the point of this verse this morning? Folks, is that we're not alone in our grief. We're not alone in our grief even in grief, we can give God thanks and celebrate the lives of others that we could share. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. You say, Mozzie, the, all I can feel right now is pain. And sometimes you feel pain for so long that afterwards it's gefoelist. You just numb. It's in that time, folks that we must learn to praise God. The two times to praise God is when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. When it makes sense and when it doesn't make sense. Those are the times to praise God. Because like He's the God of the mountains, He's the God of the valley as well. He's God. He's God. He is God. And we're not alone. We can be thankful for God in difficult circumstances. I want to encourage you with this. The devil does not have the final say in death. For us, it seems so final because, jylle, kom ons wees eerlijk met mekaar. Wie van ons kan iets doen om trainee dood? There's times, and in fact, there's, there's seldom a time where I don't. When I hear the passing of someone, a lot of times I just sit before God and say, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to be bold and step out in faith like the apostles of old and say in the name of Jesus, get up? 
Do you want me to be like Jesus and just mess an entire funeral up where all the expenses have been paid, the catering, the undertakers, the food, the flowers, the venue, the pastor, and you just, the coffin and everything, and just say, you know what, in the name of Jesus, get up. This time, I've been to a mortuary where I've stood there. I've arranged with the cops, please let me in because I wasn't a policeman anymore. I couldn't just like flash a badge and say, been in the mortuary and just wait on the Lord. Do you want me to go to that body, lay hands on that body, and say in the name of Jesus, get up. And then there are times when people pass on, and I think, you know what, Lord? I know because of the fruit that I've seen in that person's life, I'm at least confident, based on what I've seen in the Word and the fruit in that person's life, the fruit in their life, the fruit in their life, I'm confident that they're with you. I don't want to pray for them to come back. I don't want to pray for them to come back. I don't want to pray for them to come back. They're with Jesus. And folks, when we look at this whole thing of death, you know where we always meant up to be anyway? Where we meant to be anyway? As out of these dying, suffering, sickly, decaying bodies, with our new spirit bodies in the presence of Jesus. It does not get any better than that. Last week we were sharing with Almery. She was sharing with her colleagues at work about the war that's in Israel. Saying, right, that's it. This is the war that's going to end all wars. Jesus is coming. And saying, like, she had hope that this is it now. This is the end of everything. Listen to that. The hope that this is the end of everything. And we're going to be with Jesus. But it's not the war to end all wars. That war is described in Ezekiel 38 when Israel's going to have no support. Right now, Israel's getting support, so we know there's still more to come. But how can you look forward to the end of all things? Folks, if we believe that we have more to lose than to gain by dying, we will always have a problem with death. Listen carefully to those words. If we believe that we have more to lose than we have to gain, we will always have a problem with death. But if you understand what the Bible says about this thing that is inevitable for all of us, then we can have peace. We can take courage. And I get the but folks, that's the best we can do. The best we can do is rely on God's word. The devil doesn't have the final say. In John 12, verse 24 to 25, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. And he has to tell them, because you can imagine they must have been thinking, like, why must we believe what you're saying? Although he taught as one with authority, not like the other people of the day. Although he backed up his words with his actions and with the signs and wonders to prove and all the miracles. He backed it all up. He had to tell them, I'm telling you the truth. Why did Jesus need to say that? He wanted to say this. Believe no other. Believe me. And if you don't believe the words that I say, believe in me because of the works that I do. Who can predict the time, the place, the means of your birth, your life, your death, your resurrection, and pull it off? Who has ever done that? Jesus. And he says to them, I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. How many of you love life? Come on. And if you don't, you're at the right place this morning. You're at the right place this morning because Jesus can teach you to love life, but not to the point where you don't want to die and you don't want to be with him. You see, life is full of many, many interesting things. I can prove it to you. Just look around. Cake from a car. <laughs> Come on, just look around. Life is full of many interesting things. We're interesting. Look at, look, you know. <laughs> there was a time where I was looking at myself with my motorcycle helmet on in the mirror, and I thought, why is it? That my nose is always off center in the helmet. <laughs> it's not that skiff and didaxos helmet, man. I thought my whole face and my head was in perfect symmetry. Well, guess what? It's not. And you know what? Neither's yours. 
and neither is yours. My helmet is not symmetrical in the My head is not symmetrical in the helmet. The helmet is made by a machine, and well, in the case of an arrow, by the hands of dedicated Japanese technicians. Oh! <laughs> but my head is made by the hands of a living God, and you are made by the hands of a living, loving God. Life is full of interesting things. Just look at us. So, if you love your life to the point of not wanting to die, you're going to lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. That's what Jesus says. He compares his life himself. That's after chapter 11 where he's raised Lazarus. And he says, he compares his life to a kernel of wheat being sown into the ground. And it's got to die to germinate. Seeds do that. And folks, your life can do that too. Your life, when, how do we die? Well, you can either die twice, live forever, die once, and then be separated from God, not having dying to self. So the, the point is yeah, that we can die to ourselves so Jesus can live a life through us that brings life and produces fruit for many, many others. The point for that scripture is that the devil does not have the final say. Devil does not have the final say. The death of God's children is also not in vain. It's not in vain. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8. Yes, we are fully confident. And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. For then we will be at home with the Lord. I don't know about you. I know there's lots and lots of work to be done as far as the gospel is concerned, the Great Commission. I know that because there's, there's family members that I have that are not born again. By the fruit that I see in their lives, not because of the patch I wear or the fact that I'm a pastor, not because of that, but because of the fruit in their lives, I'm not sure where they're going to spend eternity. There's friends that I know. I'm not sure where they're going to spend eternity. So I know there's work to be done. There's still work to be done. But we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So there's work to be done, but we want to be present with the Lord. We want to cry out like the Holy Spirit, come, Lord Jesus, come. In Revelation 12, it speaks about the Spirit and the bride say, come. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The devil does not have the final say, and our deaths are not in vain. In John 11, 25 to 26, Jesus told her, I'm the resurrection and the life. He's speaking to Martha. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this, Martha? Folks, Jesus is asking you, do you believe this? Do you believe this? When you look at the reality the fighter, Mozi, the facts. He's a leverlose lacham and a kiss. Do you believe what Jesus says? For yourself this morning, do you believe what Jesus says about your life? Are you living in Jesus, not only believing in Jesus? but living in Jesus. Take a few moments to reflect on that. I'm done preaching. I'm going to ask the deep end to come up once more and lead us in a time of just gentle, contemplative, reflective worship in the Lord. Even if it's just a cappella or just gentle instruments in the background, but to reflect on the Lord. I want us to do this this morning. We've We've looked at the death and resurrection and what it means and the promises in the scripture and stuff that Jesus has said and what it means for us. But I'd like us to close off this morning with thanksgiving. Can we thank the Lord this morning for the lives of the loved ones we've shared? I want you to please, right there where you're seated, 
just thank the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for, and mentions the, mention the person's name in prayer. I want to thank you, Lord, that I could share this amount of time with the gift of whoever in my life. Just take a few moments to thank the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the names on the screen, Lord God. We thank you for those whose names are, are not there. We thank you for those names who are coming to our mind right now. We want to worship you in this time. And thank you and bless you and praise you, Lord. Thank you for the lives that we could share of our loved ones, Lord. Thank you for the, for the difficult times that we got through with them. Thank you for their grace, uh, your grace upon their lives. Thank you for the good memories that we can still cherish and hold dear. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name, Father. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. And then I want us to thank God that we're still alive. Thank the Lord that we're still alive. Thank the Lord that our candles are still burning. And folks, it's literally like candles. When the wax is done, and it's all burnt, it's past. When it is our time to pass, it is our time to pass. But until then, while there's breath in our lungs, we are alive. Right there where you're seated, would you just thank God for your life? Thank God for today. Thank God that we've got a chance. Thank God that we can still make plans, even though it doesn't always work according to plan. We can still make plans. Thank the Lord for that. Continue to pray as our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed. I want to give you a chance this morning. Folks, if you had a place in your life where you're not sure of your relationship with Jesus, maybe you believe in Jesus, but there's, a, there's just a little bit of doubt somewhere there because of past mistakes or whatever. Misschien is jou op a plek in jou leven waar jy bezig is om heavy droog te maak. En jy is oortuig, jy gaan het nie jimmel te maak nie. And you want to make right with God, I want to give you an opportunity this morning. Folks, it's a, it's a simple prayer of faith. It's got nothing to do with church membership or what anybody thinks. As we just grant each other respect and courtesy as we pray together this morning. If you are not 100% sure of your salvation, where you are going to spend eternity. If you're not sure, if that's you and you'd like me to pray with you, Please just quickly lift up your hand. Anybody like that here this morning? You're not sure where you're going to spend eternity. Just lift up your hand. I'd just love to pray with you this morning. Okay. Bless you. I'd like us to all stand together as we close this off in prayer. And the whole congregation just to stand as we... Father, I pray for each individual this morning, Lord, each precious life. We've got a chance here to celebrate you and to give you thanks and praise for the lives of our loved ones that have passed on. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but you are already there. We don't know what's in the future, but you are already there. And when we don't have plans, when we don't have answers, you know the plans that you have for us, says the Lord. And they're plans to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. And we thank you for that, Lord. We worship you for that, Lord. I pray your blessing and your peace on every life here this morning. Every individual, every folk, every folk, Lord, that, that has come just to pay respects and just to honor the memories of loved ones, Lord. We thank you for that. I thank you that you give us your peace that surpasses all understanding. And you watch over us and keep us till we get together next time. In Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. All God's people said, Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Let's give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just a reminder, folks, about the the uh, breakfast run or time of fellowship afterwards. We're going through to uh, Jackie's pub. If you do not know where it is and you haven't planned, just ride along with us. You can come as well. I know you had to pre-book meals before, but there's an a la carte menu that you can order from as well. So thank you for making the time to fellowship. Let's see, yeah? Those folks that are going through to Jackie's Pub are gathering together this side. I know there's some motorcycles parked at the back, but they're gathering in front here in this parking lot, or at least in the front. You're more than welcome to join us afterwards. We love and appreciate you all. Thank you for making the time to come, and for our first-time visitors. We hope that you felt right at home and comfortable here, and we're looking forward to seeing you again. God bless you, and enjoy the rest of the day. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you.